So with us today, we're starting today with a very special guest that I've won on my show forever, Sloan. Hi. You're going to tell us some serious stuff, but you're very funny. So I am. You could be funny, too. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. You look beautiful, by the Thank way. Thank you. What, um, tell us, when did you first discover that you had breast cancer? I first discovered back in December of 2018. 2018. And you... Um, Take us through the journey about skipping the one. Okay, so um, I had had my mammograms regularly since the age of 32, all the way till 2016. Every year. Every year, yes. A lot of us do not do that. Yes, until 2016, and I skipped the whole year of 2017. Okay. So I so skipped. The I met you. Yes. Uh, so I scheduled the following year, November of 2018. Right after Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, and by that next Monday, I got a call that said, something suspicious, you need to come in for an ultrasound, and within a week, I found out I had breast cancer. And what stage? Um, I was stage two, uh, grade three, invasive ductal carcinoma in my right breast. Oh, my. How scary. So what was like the first thing you did? Did you call your mom? What'd you do? I cried. Um, I went out to the car and I cried. Um, it's a very devastating thing to hear that you have cancer. Because when you think in the big picture, cancer kills. So without knowing treatments and, you know. You knew about as much as cancer as exactly. the rest of us. Right. You know, you think of movies where people are sick and dying and I'm. Like, I'm going to die. I, this is it. I'm and done. you were by yourself, I assume. You went to the doctor's appointment by yourself. Um, for the ultrasound, yes. Yes. Did you tell anybody when they saw suspicious behavior, yeah, I'm going to go back to the doctor, there's something suspicious? Um, you know, I had told my family and my so boyfriend at the knew. time, I think. And okay. um, my niece went with me because okay. after the diagnosis, um, my, my, back, backtrack a little bit, um, I did have to have a biopsy. So my niece did go with me to that, which I bless her heart because that was not a fun thing to go through. I bet. Um, yeah, I was just devastated. I was very, very devastated. Okay, so take us through work. You had just gotten a new job. I How had, long was it that you'd been at this job? I started the new job in May of 2018, and it was now December of 2018, so six months. And then you told them, I have cancer, I need to take a little time off. I did. And they were cool initially. They were cool initially, yes. Everything was fine. Um, unfortunately, I didn't realize that the treatments would take their toll on me the way that they did. And I was just unable to go back to work within a time frame that worked for them. So you did your treatments. How many treatments did you have? I had uh, 14 treatments altogether. Wow. Um, that consisted of um, my first round of chemotherapy was every other week for four treatments, and that was adromycin cytoxan, which if you know or hear anybody speak of breast cancer, a lot of women, they call it the red double. Um, it is one of the more potent, I believe. Um, they can't even put it through the IV machine. It has to be... The adromycin part, it has to be pushed through a huge syringe. They have to push it through. Well, I had a port here, so. Oh, my. Um, and then I got about a week off from that, and I started my treatment back in March of uh, 2019, March 11th, exactly. So around the 1st of April, um, I started Taxol, and that's every week, once a week, for 10 weeks in a row. Wow. Yeah, you lose your hair, you lose your eyelashes, your eyebrows, your self-esteem. You get chunky because um, they're also giving you steroids to keep you from being ill. And those, take they, they really take a toll on your body. You know, and I'm shocked. Here. I have to say this, though. I really am shocked at how great you look. Oh, well, thank you. Because on the phone, you're like, oh, I gained weight. <laughs> I look like this. Now, you look great. You look Thanks. slim. You look healthy. Um, how do you feel now? Um, you know, I still have some after effects. I get tired very easily. Um, I have bone aches. Um, I have neuropathy. 
This is the first time I've actually worn wedges in over a year. Oh, my God. Um, Thank you. Now I feel special. <laughs> um, but, I mean, overall, I'm trying to just push forward and move on. Um, I did just have a breast reconstructive surgery last week on Thursday, so just a week what ago. What a trooper. This is amazing. Um, and everything's going to come together, and I can put that in the past. But, you know, it, it'll always be an experience that I hope in the future I can help other women when they're scared, nervous, you know. Um, I just want to be able to be there for somebody else. And explain um, getting the double mastectomy and how your doctors felt about all that. Explain that process. Oh, okay. So the double mastectomy, um, I already knew at my diagnosis that that's what I wanted for myself. Which one had the cancer? My right. The right one, okay. So I already knew that's what I wanted for myself, and um, I met with the breast surgeon, and they wanted to push only having a unilateral because their theory is why mess with the perfectly good breast? There's nothing wrong with it. Why even mess with it? Because um, when you're dealing with breast cancer, um, they do tell you that your chances for it reoccurring are the same whether you do unilateral or mastectomy or not returning at all. Mm -hmm. Because breast cancer can return, even though I've had a double mastectomy, it can return in other parts of your body. Correct. But it will be breast cancer. It might show up in your liver, but it's breast cancer or your bones. Interesting. But it's breast cancer. How does yeah. that make it okay? How does that make it breast cancer? Is there a certain cancer that's in your breast that yes. can't be in other places? But then it can move. If... Yeah, it can move. Okay, it can move. And I do believe I'm not quite sure about the brain, but I do believe it's um, bones, liver, lungs, and brain for breast cancer. Those will be other places that it would reoccur in your body. If you've had a double mastectomy. So you can say, I have breast cancer in my liver. Yes. I have breast cancer I in I currently my have a girlfriend right now. Her name is Paula. And um, hers metastasized. She's a stage four. And it did spread to her liver and to her spine. Wow. That is just... But it's breast cancer. Oh, my. Did you make a lot of friends in the cancer world now that you're one of them? Is I it like absolutely the little, did. The club you don't want to be a part of, but you're a part of yes. and you're close? Okay. I absolutely did. Um, lots of ladies, when you go in for treatment at your infusion center, you just, I mean. You, you bond. Know, yeah, you do. You definitely do bond. Um, unfortunately, when you're going through breast cancer, I just realized this last night that even when I was out and about when I could be, I always talked about my breast cancer. It was like the big topic, my breast cancer. Um, and just through that, you know, other people overhearing conversations or whatever, I've also, you know, made friends. And I have friends of friends who call and say, hey, I know somebody who just got diagnosed. Can you please talk to her? She's scared. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. You took on, like, this role. You just because, I mean, yeah. you just took it on. I mean, and it's funny because I am on a lot of uh, Facebook uh, breast cancer support groups, and I love to just throw out my experiences, let these girls know that it's not as scary as you think. Like, I think one of the biggest things for breast cancer um, victims is when you go in and you get diagnosed, you have your surgery, you find out you're losing your breasts. That's the number one. But then the next is you move on to chemotherapy and you find out you're, you're going to lose your hair. And for oh, me gosh. personally, that was more of a downer than the fact that I was going to have chemotherapy. Just losing my hair, losing my eyebrows, my eyelashes. And that's more real almost than your breasts because yes. that's the first thing you see in the mirror. You don't. You can, right. like, go the whole day without actually, like, looking at your breasts. But yeah. you can look at this. Yes. And it was very hard because I just looked, you know, a few weeks back, I looked at some pictures of when I was actually going through treatment, and I didn't really realize how bad I looked until I looked back, you know, I'm so far gone. I'm not so yeah, far no, gone. Yeah, no, I know what I'm you so mean. You're moved, so far removed so, from right. that. Right. I was like, wow, I really did look sick. Wow. And I never, I didn't notice it because I saw myself every day. Um, you just get used? You do. You get used to the news. You do. Shop. You get used to it. Um, you know, the surgery was rough. 
Um, the chemo was rough. The radiation, I had burns from about here all the way here. They were horrible. Um, and then this was my last step, my reconstructive surgery, and hopefully I can, I'm going to heal and move on and be a cancer survivor warrior. How long did you know when you were out of the clear? I know you're never like completely out of the woods. When did you know that you were out of the woods as much as you were hoping to be out of the woods? Um, I think for me personally, it was the last day of my chemotherapy, which was July 15th of 2019. Okay. Um, I don't think you ever are really going to feel like you're out of the woods because, you know, I mean, once you're faced with cancer and you get a diagnosis, it can always come back. Yeah. And I mean, it doesn't matter what you do. You can eat right, not smoke, not drink, you know, take care of yourself, run 20 miles a day, and it, comes back. it yeah, it, it can come back. Um, I, that day that I got to ring the bell, I honestly, the feeling of I'm cancer free. How amazing. But I still had radiation to go through. And when radiation was over, that was really hard because now you're like, oh my gosh, there's no more treatment. What's going to happen now? Like, you know, am I inst is it going to instantly come back? I'm not in treatment. I wanted to go back to yeah, chemotherapy. Yeah, nobody's looking. No one looks at you, but they don't care. Like you're well, so it's you yeah. can't you can't just always every week go yes. to the doctor and be like, check me, check me, yeah. check me, huh? Another scary thing for me too was um, once you graduate from chemotherapy, you see your oncologist once a month. Then you graduate to every three months. Then you graduate to months. once a year. And it's scary because um, I trust, you know, they do blood tests that can detect if the cancer has returned. or right. But it's really scary because there's no, like I've never had a, a lot of ladies get PET scans. And I've never had one. And I always felt like, why aren't you giving me a PET scan so I know for sure that I, the cancer is gone. But why won't they give you a PET scan? Um, I guess in my case, the cancer would be too microscopic for a PET scan to pick oh, up. Okay. So it would be like doing it for no reason. And obviously, when you do extra things such as scans, CT scans, PET scans, those also can cause cancer. So. Oh, my. <laughs> and so, so tell us a little bit about your financial situation. Because you had to take more time off than you thought from your new job. Yes. So in June of... 2019 I was actually let go from my job but I was still going through chemotherapy and I was ill so there was no way that I could have gone back to being a full-time employee um I was living off of state disability and you know being a normal functioning person who has worked since I was 14 um I was living on a fixed income and I had medical bills rolling in and you know you have credit card bills and you got to put gas in your car because you have 18 million doctor's appointments every week. Um, you know I had to put groceries on the table. My mom was helping me living with me. I had to make sure the electricity was paid. Um, it was it was a very very rough time for me and it still is because you know I haven't found a job yet and my last surgery was kind of a hindrance, you know, because I didn't really want to start a new job and then be like, oh, hey, got to be out for six weeks because I'm having yeah, reconstructive surgery. Exactly. Um, so by the grace of God, I have two dear friends, um, Julie and Jason Watkins, and they gifted me the most precious gift this past week. And thank you guys. Um, you know. I feel blessed because they're two working people who have a mortgage and have children and have car payments, and they gifted me a a very a very substantial amount to help me get through. Oh, thank God! Thank you guys. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I was in in um, my house was in foreclosure, and it um, it took an act act of Congress for me to. Work, I worked every day with my mortgage company to try and get it out of foreclosure, and yay, it worked out for me. My house is safe. Everything's good. Oh, thank goodness. Everything's looking up. So I just 
you know, trying to get back to being normal. And we have a How event coming up, um, Helping One Women. Helping One Woman, for those of you guys that don't know about it, they put it on once a month. Fresno puts on one, Clovis puts on one. Yes. You are going to be um, awarded the Clovis one on February 25th? Yes. Okay. I think I think we have a – do we have a flyer yet for that? We, we don't. They just sent me just the today? rough draft today. So they haven't posted it yet, okay. but it should be up within a couple days. And um, Oh, we'll post it on my yes, page as well. Um, please do. Thank you. So the 25th at the point at 6 p.m. Yes. So those guys, remember, put it on your calendars right now if you have it. It's the 25th. Um, at 6 p.m. at the point. And tickets, though. Can people get tickets last minute? I'm not really sure if you can. I do believe that you have to get them in advance. Because we, what if, we, and what if we just want to help? Um, do I, we? I do believe that people can just show up. I mean, I don't think you're obligated. I think, yeah. So we might not be obligated to seat, but I mean, we might not have a seat, but then you can show up and give donations. Yes. Um, and then also, what do people want to donate to you now? I know you had a GoFundMe page set up. Was that deactivated? I did have a GoFundMe page. I have not checked on it in quite some time because it never generated. After a certain point. Yeah. yeah. So um, I might have to get back to you on that. I mean, I have. We'll keep things posted on my site so you guys can be informed. And then, yeah, maybe with the How event, too, we could see how we could still. Um, yes put in some checks to them that it gets to you. Oh, that would be awesome. But I know I me and my that. mom bought our tickets. Oh. So we're very excited to come support you awesome. on Tuesday. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. I, I can't even believe that I'm an honoree. I, I, it's amazing. I mean, the blessings are just, they're coming. Well, you're so inspirational. I mean, I think it's just, you know, your personality is oh, really... I mean, I don't think I've been quite as humorous today, but <laughs> I, I think you're great. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about your dating life, or is that something you don't want to talk um, about? No, let's just so talk people about who it. are going to go on. I've actually never talked about anybody's dating life on the show ever. This is the first time, but I just wanted people to know kind of what had had happened with the whole cancer thing. Okay, so at the beginning of um, my diagnosis, I had been dating somebody, but only for a couple months. And it was awkward because I had to sit this person down and say, hey, look, you know, I just found out I have breast cancer. Um, Were you guys living together? No. Okay. No. Um, you know, you can either stay or go. He chose to stay. Um, he literally went through the whole breast cancer treatments, um, illness. I mean, the whole, almost the entire year. And um, as soon as I got better, he chose to break off the relationship. Oh, my. Um, you know, and I do look back on it now, um, as it's upsetting as it was, um, I think when you're actually the cancer patient, you don't understand what a toll it takes on the somebody who is a partner of a person who has cancer. And a good friend just told me this, um, in order to go through something life-changing such as cancer, the person that's with you honestly has to be your soulmate because cancer will make or break. And yeah. in my, my situation, it, it broke the relationship. So um, I'm single. <laughs> ready to get out there so <laughs> well we do have a valentine's day party coming out oh. people are that as for singles it's a mixer it's like a, on the 13th oh the awesome valentine's day. i'm game i'm game <laughs> i always should have you guys at the same time thank you so much son and i'm hoping that there is a book somewhere in the future of me you know i would love that my biggest goal for the future is um you know whether it be a job or just volunteering that I can just help people um, with their prognosis. Let, you know, let them know it's not that scary. Let them know, don't fear chemo. Let them know you're going to be okay and you're going to live. And we have your email up. You don't want to give out your Instagram or Facebook? Um, oh, that's fine. You know, but, so if you guys do want to make personal donations or um, just check up on her or get her Facebook or um, Instagram information, go to her email address and send her because You'll get motivational quotes if you're going through it or know someone going through it. Yeah. Since you're. Because I'm here. If anybody ever. So needs that's a talk. job you've taken on. I have. So I, I, I love it. I appreciate that. I love to help someone feel better in the end with their prognosis because, you know, I thought it was the most scariest thing. Um, and here I am. I'm done. 
And you look amazing. I, Thank I'm you. seriously in a state of shock. I mean, I know I've seen pictures and stuff, but you actually look. I mean, they yeah. don't do, you look amazing yeah. right now. Like, we can go out in the town and people are going to be like, this oh, woman was sick go. like a year ago. Or, <laughs> no, you were sick six months, less than, like six months ago yeah. you were sick. Yes. Um, wow. This is amazing. I'm rocking my, my uh, rock star do here. <laughs> you look so great. Thank though. you. Well, thank you so much for coming on my show. Oh, I, I appreciate you having me. It was a pleasure. And, um, yeah, I look forward to helping people and. Seeing people at my How dinner. And yes. Go to How, February 25th. And I am looking for a job, too. Yes. 